Well, America's um, you know much overdue withdrawal from Syria is continuing today. Uh, the uh, the Kurds and uh, and of course the uh, the warmongers in America are up in arms uh, because uh, you know there are more U.S. troops withdrawing from various bases and uh, there are videos coming out now of uh, you know villagers throwing tomatoes at the uh, the uh, the MRAPs as they're in reverse uh, backing away towards Iraq. You know, and I'm not gonna you know harp on the the people who live in those those communities because uh, I'm sure if I were in their position I'd feel exactly the same way uh, because uh, you know I <laughs> I don't want to be, uh, you know, in a war zone. I'd much rather, you know, have, uh, you know, a U.S. occupation there. Uh, but of course, as an American, I have a different perspective because uh, I see no reason why, you know, my tax dollars and why, you know, my neighbors who sign up for the military should have to die uh, to protect people over there. And of course, even if, uh, you know, and that's assuming that the the mission is truly noble and that the only reason why the U.S. was there was just to protect these innocent people, which of course is never the case. The U.S. is not, you know, a charity organization. Uh, you know, Dave Smith has a great line that, uh, uh, you know, the the state is uh, is uh, the mafia masquerading as a humanitarian organization, and uh, this is a great example of that. Uh, but this also. Um, this withdrawal uh, that Trump is conducting, the way he's conducting it is so brazen um, as to expose uh, the U.S. government for, you know, what it truly is, which is, you know, much more so the mafia organization and less so the humanitarian one. Because the uh, the U.S. supposedly was in all of these, you know, places scattered across northern Syria – uh, for humanitarian reasons, but they're withdrawing and, uh, re- you know, and, and uh, returning and reorganizing their presence uh, in a very uh, mafioso sort of way. Because as we can see, the U.S. is, uh, you know, rapidly withdrawing their forces from the civilian population areas uh, in uh, this part of Syria that the U.S. has been in, in, uh, you know, what the Kurds call Rojava, which I believe means the West, you know, as in Western Kurdistan. Uh, but they so they're withdrawing their troops from where the people live, but they're keeping their troops where the oil is, and that of course uh, here is uh, you know the uh, uh, pretty well exposes what was going on here. The U.S. was not that concerned about what happened to the people there. Uh, the U.S. primarily uh, was interested in uh, keeping away uh, this oil in Syria away from you know the Assad regime or you know ISIS or whoever else the U.S. happens not to like it time. Theoretically, the U.S. was not interested in keeping the oil away from ISIS when ISIS was aligned with the U.S., but now that they're not, uh, the U.S. doesn't want ISIS or Assad uh, to have any of the oil. And so by having a humanitarian mission uh, to protect the Kurds in northern Syria, that was a good way to uh, sort of disguise uh, the operation of, uh, you know, protecting the oil from, uh, from you know, anyone who, who may want to use it. But now that Erdogan started his operation, the uh, uh, the U.S. has decided, hey, we don't want to actually protect the Kurds. That was just a bluff. Uh, but we do still want to protect the oil, so we're going to do that. Now, unfortunately, um, I can find some some positive value in both Trump's actions and Trump's words in this situation, um, but they don't go they don't mesh very well together, you know, because like I said, Trump's actions uh, expose. Uh, the U.S.'s lack of, uh, you know, humanitarian commitment and their uh, true focus on hard power politics, and I find that useful uh, because it delegitimizes, uh, you know, U- American foreign policy, uh, you know, more broadly. So that's a good thing in my eyes. Um, however, um, Trump's rhetoric is uh, on this issue is actually genuinely good, uh, and the problem is, is is that he's not actually, you know, living up to his rhetoric. Uh, you know, because he's talking about how the U.S. shouldn't be involved in in Syria and all this, and and how uh, you know there's too many of these stupid wars that we're involved in, and blah blah blah. And you know what he's saying is true, 100 percent true. However, um, you know he's full of shit because he's not actually carrying out and living up to those words. He's only saying that because it's convenient here. By stupid war, um, he's saying that, okay, well, I don't want to get involved with Turkey, but this is just one war that happens to not be in America's interest to get involved in. Uh, it's not that um, you know Trump is against stupid wars in general, even though that's how his rhetoric has sounded you know, since he was a candidate uh, and arguably for you know, most of his life as you know, speaking in public. 
But he's not carried that out. You know, he hasn't ended the dumb war in Yemen. He hasn't, uh, you know, ended really any dumb war. Uh, the, you know this the Syria thing. While I do appreciate that he's withdrawing most of the troops from Syria, uh, he's not you know bringing them home or anything. He's just sending them into Western Iraq. So these you know these troops are going to go from uh, you know just sort of guarding uh, bases uh, in uh, Syrian Kurdistan to uh, you know guarding bases in Western Iraq. You know this is hardly a sea change in fundamental American foreign policy. All this is is a uh, uh, sort of an adjustment of that policy. It's not a uh, it's not a uh, a revolution by an, in any sense. Uh, he's not uh, you know changing uh, the the status quo, which is you know America as a world police. He's just deciding to uh, focus his policing efforts on a different part of you know the Middle East. He's not even withdrawing from the Middle East and going to a different part of the world. He's staying in the Middle East. Staying focused there, but he's saying, you know what? Why don't we just shift our focus towards Iraq and let Syria just sort of, you know, do its own thing for a little while, uh, you know, which is, you know, not the craziest thing in the world, because at least, you know, the Iraqis, I believe, still consent to the U.S. being in that in their country. Uh, they at least want uh, U.S. forces there, you know, to some extent. Uh, Syria never okayed that. Syria never said, "Hey, you should come in and uh, you know fight with our country." Now the Kurds did, of course, and the Kurds were the ones who really, uh, you know, had established control in that area. So I guess you could make the case that it was at least they were <laughs> invited by the Kurds. But of course, one very important party who was not consulted when the U.S. went into Syrian Kurdistan or Rojava or Northeast Syria or whatever you want to call it uh, was the U.S. Congress. And, of course, only Congress has the power to declare war. Um, now, if I remember correctly, uh, when Obama originally wanted to invade Syria to overthrow Assad, you know, it feels like ages ago, uh, the U.S. Congress did actually hold a vote on it, and they voted against it. And they said, no, you're not allowed to overthrow Assad. We don't want, it to, we don't want to get involved in that. Um, so, you know, the Obama administration had to do it covertly through the CIA, which uh, Congress has no oversight over. Uh, you know, the, the so-called, uh, you know, uh, um, House and Senate intelligence committees that are supposed to uh, supervise uh, the intelligence committee or the intelligence community uh, doesn't do that. They're completely compromised. Uh, they're total tools. I mean, you look at this like this Adam Schiff guy or any of the other guys uh, who are involved in the uh, the intelligence communities. They are CIA puppets through and through. You know, the CIA essentially regulates itself, and so they were able to wage their covert war in Syria for years. And now that Trump is using his executive authority uh, to undo a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of the illegal involvement of the U.S., the non-congressionally authorized uh, military involvement in Syria of the United States, uh, Congress is quite upset uh, because orange man bad. That's really the only reason. Um, because Congress, you know, was never consented uh, when it came to uh, the involvement here. Obama and uh, Trump both were illegally uh, in Syria. They had no authorization to put troops there. And so Trump should withdraw whether he wanted uh, to help the Kurds or not. If he really wanted to help the Kurds, what he should do, have done is withdrawn the troops and gone to Congress and said, hey, I need authorization to help the Kurds because this is illegal. Uh, you know, My predecessor Obama put these troops here, but he didn't have the right to do that. So I have to pull them out as a matter of law because I swore an oath to uphold the Constitution. Uh, you know, but again, all this, all of this would happen in upside down world where people still valued the law. We all know that uh, you know politicians don't value the law. But I mean, I, I can't help but feel crazy when I when I think about just how absurd uh, reality really is and how nobody else really seems to see what's going on. Uh, you know, people just are eating up whatever you know CNN or MSNBC or Fox or whoever is is feeding into their ears. And there are actually people upset that Trump is withdrawing, as if you know he had the power to be there to begin with, which he absolutely did not. I mean, these cowards in Congress who are castigating Trump for this, uh, if they really wanted to go to war in Syria, what they could do is pass a declaration of war, uh, because they're the only ones who can do that. Uh, you know, They can uh, completely force Trump to do it. Uh, even if Trump vetoed, they could override his veto. Uh, you know, War is the only thing that Congress agrees on. So uh, they certainly could get – I mean I think there were only like 50 people uh, who voted against the resolution to condemn Trump for withdrawing uh, you know, most of the troops from Syria, 
With those kinds of numbers, Congress could pass a declaration of war and uh, override Trump's veto and force him uh, to put troops back in Syria. But they're not going to do that because they're cowards because they know that this is unpopular. Because then, just like with the Iraq war, if these congressmen are on the record – Voting for a war that turns out to be a disaster, which of course it will, uh, you know, Americans will die for no reason, uh, and eventually the U.S. will, you know, withdraw anyway in shame, just like in Vietnam. So overall, really, there are no good guys in this story. Um, Trump's full of shit. Congress is full of shit. Uh, Nothing – no no one here really is telling the truth about anything. Uh, they're all lying to various degrees, and um, – I'm just kind of feeling fed up today. So if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do uh, click the subscribe button because uh, I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.